so ajke we are going to discuss about uh, collision so our topic for today is collision now whenever we are talking about uh, uh, mechanics and we are talking about the motion of the body uh, collision is an important part because it talks about how the different bodies will behave in terms of momentum and kinetic energy when they are colliding now this factor of collision actually mainly depends on you know what is the mass of the body and it's quite obvious that uh, if it's a heavy mass colliding with a light mass the light mass will get more damaged and the simple reason is you know the transfer of uh, momentum that will be actually there or transfer of velocity that will be there so if we talk about collision there are usually three kinds of collision uh, that we should actually uh, talk about uh, one is uh, your elastic uh, collision uh, the second one is uh, in elastic collision in elastic collision and the third one as i have discussed the other class it's uh, completely in elastic collision completely in elastic now if you look into these three kinds of collision we can always do the maths and think about how to you know derive different things about it but uh, before that we have to uh, understand you your uh, you know uh, what is exactly elastic collision in elastic collision and so on. so whenever i i said uh, when we are talking about uh, conservation uh, there are two kinds of conservation that we should actually look into so conservation so as i said in the other class there are two things that we should look into conservation of momentum and conservation of energy and uh, using these conservation laws uh, even in nuclear physics and atomic physics also a lot of particles has also been discovered so conservation of momentum and conservation of energy so we are going to talk about energy conservation that is kinetic energy conservation and let's say this is momentum p so what happens uh, in elastic collision uh, if you look into the momentum as well as the kinetic energy both are conserved both are conserved so that's very important when we talk about uh, elastic collision uh, completely in elastic collision for example if we are having a velocity of a body as v and another body is at rest let's say 0 meter per second or iska ho gaya v meter per second uh, after it collides their velocity will get interchanged that means the first ball let's say this is 1 this is 2 the first ball will come to rest it will stop and it will transfer its entire energy the entire momentum into the second ball the second ball will start moving at the velocity of v meter per second so that is your uh, you know elastic collision now when we talk about in elastic collision that is completely in elastic or just in elastic collision okay so uh, in completely in elastic what happens is uh, you know only this momentum is conserved here only momentum is conserved in elastic collision here also momentum is conserved so there is no question of kinetic energy conservation a number of times so that's it abhi is pe kya ho raha hai when we are having two bodies uh, let's say this is body 1 and this is body 2 and uh, there is only talking about momentum conservation let's say this is moving with a velocity v1 and this is moving with a velocity v2 now when they collide with each other after collision the body will stick together okay I'm sorry it's elastic in elastic not completely in elastic completely in elastic it will stick together so after collision what happens is uh, this body and this body 1 and 2 will both start moving but they will again start moving with a different velocity altogether this will be let's say v3 this will be v4 so in dono ka velocity rahega koi interchange bhi nahi hoga but both the velocities can be different as well so this is an example of elastic in elastic collision now in completely in elastic collision it might be one self first body this is the second body and this is having a velocity v1 this is having a velocity v2 after collision both these bodies will actually stick together and they will move with a common velocity capital v now why it is important to know this uh, because based on this we can actually you know derive a number of uh, Uh, relations between velocity and momentum of different bodies which will actually help us to uh, you know uh, calculate uh, the unknown quantities this is also used to find out unknown particles uh, if you look into 
you know quantum uh, qu nuclear physics and so on so let's just discuss each of them one by one and more or less the approach will more or less remain the same we'll do also do some numericals uh, which will actually help us to understand it better uh, for convenience at this point of time let's consider this collision to be in one dimension that means we are going to consider only the change along the x-axis we can also consider it to be in two dimensional and three dimensional that's not an issue the logic is that uh, you know one dimension two or three dimension so this is the first example in one dimensional collision and the topic is completely uh, inelastic let's talk about inelastic first elastic the kinetic energy we conserve here we're talking about let's say completely inelastic collision where the you know the two bodies will stick together after the collision so whenever you are going to do any kind of collision problem be it a numerical or you are solving any kind of uh, you know theory for this you have to uh, think about it in two ways first you have to think what is the initial condition that is being given and then you have to check what is the final condition that means after collision what happens final means after collision we have check initial means before collision what is the condition so we can always think about two bodies and let's say the first body has got a mass one m1 and it was moving with velocity v1 and in the second body was let's say having a mass m2 and let's say it was at rest zero so this is uh, meter per second and this is zero meter per second so that's the condition for the initial now what happens is after collision as i said it is completely inelastic both the bodies will stick together so that means the mass will become m1 plus m2 and both of them will actually start moving with a common velocity so common velocity is let's say v dash so that's how you know uh, the condition works and as i said in completely inelastic collision you are basically going to have only momentum conserved there is no kinetic energy that will actually get conserved so that means conservation ka matlab hai hai ki the momentum before collision and after collision will more or less remain the same so in such cases we are only going to analyze the momentum conservation uh, this is helpful in uh, you know in later classes also you will actually need these topics they are important so we are going to talk about uh, momentum conservation so if we talk about uh, momentum conservation we know uh, momentum before collision what is the value we can take the total momentum before collision before collision both the bodies are moving separately first one momentum money m1 v1 mass into velocity is momentum and for the second one mass is m2 and the velocity is zero but after collision what happens is both the bodies are moving together so they stick together it is m1 plus m2 and the velocity will be a common velocity let's say v dash just for convenience and uh, we can actually you know find out what is my v dash as well in this particular case this one we have oversimplified we have just considered the second body is at rest it is not necessary it may not be at rest as well it depends from question to question but we have just kept it simple m1 v1 divided by m plus m1 plus m2 so if i want to measure the velocity uh, the final velocity with which they move it will be something like this so you can see it actually depends on mass as well now we said that uh, you know it is uh, the kinetic energy is not conserved that means the kinetic energy is lost that means energy is lost okay please remember this logic that if i say that the kinetic energy is not conserved not conserved let's say if okay if it is not uh, conserved so uh, it simply means that you know there will be some loss of kinetic energy obviously if it is not conserved that means the kinetic energy is actually getting lost so this loss is obviously whatever is the kinetic energy final you can calculate and then minus whatever was the kinetic energy initial you can take the you know difference between the two and you can find out what was the loss in kinetic energy so here also we can actually do that uh, calculation and find out what is the loss in kinetic energy so we can do it let's try doing this and we'll see that we'll be able to find out some parameters from here so loss of kinetic energy kinetic energy the loss now loss would have been zero 
that means it is conserved but obviously we said that it is inelastic collision kinetic energy is lost because the velocity is changing the velocity does not remain same so you can write it down as kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial so we can you know say use the simple uh, relation of kinetic energy that we know that is uh, you know before this it was actually half of final and mudhu to the mass equal to h and we know kinetic energy is half mv square so m is nothing but m1 plus m2 and the final velocity was nothing but v dash square if we can take that minus kinetic energy initial now initially to we know uh, this velocity was zero so i don't need to consider this let's just consider this uh, kinetic energy so you can write it down as half m1 p1 square so this is my uh, you know loss in uh, kinetic energy and we can actually find this out now we can easily find it out because you know v dash we have already calculated what is v dash so we can actually replace it here i can uh, you know simply write it down as half of m1 plus m2 into v dash square v dash square and i can write it down it as m1 square v1 square divided by m1 plus m2 square m1 plus m2 whole square so this is quite obvious because vj square mani eta square puro square kore dilam m1 square v1 square by m1 plus m2 square and then minus half of m1 v1 square so this and you know this entire term gets cancelled and uh, we can actually get a simplified form for this so if i uh, take the simplified form again it, it could be equal to and uh, we can write it down as can write it down as half m1 square v1 square m1 square v1 square okay divided by m1 plus m2 minus half m1 v1 square so we have this okay i can simplify it further we can see that we can actually take it to be half m1 v1 square common amader bhitore thakbe more or less pore ekta m1 theke jacche divided by m1 plus m2 minus half m1 v1 square we have already taken it outside so it is minus 1 okay now uh, we can simplify it further and then we can say write it down as half m1 v1 square it's all just basic maths m1 plus m2 and uh, this side we have got m1 minus you take the lcm it will go here it will minus m1 minus m2 so that's how it is m1 m1 actually will get uh, cancelled out and then we can get it to be minus of half because there is a minus m2 here so i can write it down this way and then i can write down m1 m2 divided by m1 plus m2 p1 square okay now you see that there is a minus sign okay so what we see here is what is our conclusion that we actually getting the loss of kinetic energy and if you know the value that with what velocity it has hit the body which was at rest what are the masses of the two bodies you can easily find out what is the loss in kinetic energy in an inelastic collision but an important conclusion here is that the kinetic energy minus kinetic energy final minus initial that we have calculated the answer that we are getting is actually negative now if it is negative that means obviously it's a loss because kinetic energy initial was more and the kinetic energy final was less so you are subtracting a larger quantity from a smaller quantity and that's negative okay so this uh, simply means that you know okay, therefore kinetic energy final will obviously be less than kinetic energy initial okay so some kinetic energy is lost we can easily conclude here so uh, how much kinetic energy is lost may be a numerical question but why kinetic energy is lost how do you prove mathematically that the kinetic energy is lost maybe for that kind of question you can always take this approach okay? so that is important so this is how we are going to you know talk about uh, momentum conservation when we are talking about in elastic collision now when we are talking about um, elastic collision okay elastic collision we know momentum and kinetic energy both are more or less both are conserved okay 
so that's again important elastic collision now now elastic collision and match set to more complicated uh, we have to you know talk more about momentum as well as kinetic energy that's very important now we are again going to talk about collision in one dimension and this time we are going to talk about elastic collision now as i said the other day ki elastic inelastic collision a difference so at the same time for convenience we are going to take it to be in one dimension okay so here also for elastic in uh, collision we are going to consider two situations here but ekhane amra kinetic energy ta consider korbo as conserved so let's say this is the initial condition and initial condition let me say mass was m1 and let's say initial velocity was u1 for the first particle and for the second particle mass is m2 and the velocity is zero so that means my in initial condition and if i look into the final condition the mass is m1 and let's say the final velocity is v1 and mass is m2 and the final velocity is v2 so for now i am not saying it is elastic later on we will see that obviously it's elastic because the velocities get interchanged we are going to do the calculations now okay so uh, let's just take you know any general case so initially a mass m1 m2 velocity u1 0 finally it got m1 m2 and v1 v2 we are going to use the condition for elastic collision later okay so let's just check for the first case that is uh, you know momentum uh, conservation momentum conservation and we are going to talk about both momentum conservation and kinetic energy because we are going to talk about elastic collision so momentum conservation and we can see m1 u1 that was the momentum before collision the second is zero because the mass is velocity is zero for the second case is equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2 okay so we can keep it like this i can't simplify it further not much this is number one and then we can actually talk about kinetic energy conservation kinetic energy conservation now kinetic energy conservation also will happen because we are talking about elastic collision and we are going to see what happens in elastic collision when it is possible that there will be a kinetic energy conservation so here kinetic energy ka source lete hain we can talk about half kinetic energy before collision is half m1 u1 square second part is zero is equal to after collision it must be equal so i can write it down as half m1 v1 square plus half m2 v2 square so that's my kinetic energy before and after collision and both of them must be more or less equal so you can see every case we can actually cancel out of this half uh, don't need it and we can mark this as number two so what do we observe here is that we can actually connect uh, this relation one and two so let's take one and if we really want to connect it with two we can say that it is m1 u1 but here is m1 u1 square so what we can do is we can multiply this with u1 on both sides okay so or uh, with v1 or we, what we can do we can also multiply this relation with v2 on both sides okay v2 then we say v2 square will we'll get rid of that term as well okay so we can do that we can either ways there are different ways of doing it let me just take this as let's say v2 gives the first term i'm multiplying it with v2 let's remember the aim we have to eliminate the term so that we are actually get to what is my final velocity v1 and so on so v2 se multiply karenge to ye v2 square ho jayega and we can easily eliminate this so v2 on both sides obviously so it would be m1 u1 v2 is equal to m1 v1 v2 then plus m2 v2 square so you see this is a term which has got m2 v2 square or pehla wala equation mein uh, second wale mein bhi m2 v2 square hai so we can uh, you know eliminate try eliminating the terms now okay so what we can do is 2 minus 3 we can take 2 and then subtract it from 3 let's do it so if we take 2 uh, that is this and subtract it from 3 sorry I just, just uh, let me just keep it here numerical 2 minus 3 so 2 minus 3 on this side it would be nothing but uh, on the left hand side it is m1 u1 square minus m1 u1 v2 and on the right hand side it would be m1 v1 square minus 
m1 v1 v2 okay and this term will get cancelled m2 v2 square minus m2 v2 square cancel so we are left out with only this terms okay so we can see on uh, you know both the sides we are basically having uh, as it in terms of m1 we've got rid of m2 terms so that means you know number of variables has reduced so on this side we can take common m1 u1 inside bracket it would be nothing but u1 minus v2 you see this u1 minus v2 is equal to on this side we can take it to be m1 v1 so v1 minus v2 okay so we have this relation so we can see we can cancel out uh, m1 m1 on both sides we are getting rid of this m1 rather let's open the bracket we let's just try to write it down as u1 square minus u1 v2 is equal to v1 square minus v2 so you know basic maths we'll do some basic maths here u1 square v1 square we can take it to the other side we can write it down as v1 square minus of this minus adk we can see this is v2 sorry v1 is also there v1 v2 and uh, one term is uh, u1 v2 so u1 v2 is positive if you take it on this side so let me take it on this side u1 v2 minus v1 v2 okay so in this particular case we can take v2 common so if we take v2 common here common here u1 minus v1 so this is on this side and on this side it would be u1 square minus v1 on square it would be u1 plus v1 and this would be u1 minus v1 and on this side we have got v2 and then u1 minus v1 so you can see this u1 minus v1 u1 minus v1 will get cancelled and you see that the equation actually gets quite simplified that means what we are getting here is this v2 is equal to u1 plus v1 so we can you know mark this as let's say number four okay and we can put this uh, result okay we can put this uh, result of v2 in equation one okay v2 we can put and we can find out what is my v1 okay so as i said there is an interchange that is also possible so v2 we have found out let's put this in four so let's say four in one in place four in one so we can write it down this as m1 u1 is equal to m1 v1 plus m2 okay into in place of v2 v2 we are going to put u1 plus v1 this is u1 plus v1 okay so it becomes uh, simpler now okay it becomes uh, simpler and uh, if we you know try to uh, modify this what we see here is that we have to we can find out v1 from here very easily okay so if we v1 nikalna hai, we can simply write it down as m1 u1 is equal to m1 v1 plus m2 u1 m2 u1 plus m2 v1 okay so these lo longer type of sums are obviously expected you have to do it v1 v1 so i can take v1 because my aim is to find out v1 so v1 is equal to m1 m2 this would be m1 plus m2 that would be my v1 and remaining is m2 u2 so plus m2 u2 m2 u1 sorry m2 u1 so we can take m1 uh, v on one side i need just v1 so if you just simplify this you can see you can this would be nothing but um you can take u1 common here v1 is here u1 take common so it will be m1 educationally m2 so it will be m1 minus m2 so i can write it down as m1 minus m2 and v1 was not alone it was m1 plus m2 so you can just simplify this and you can check you get this result m1 plus so uh, this is my velocity that we actually are getting uh, if the kinetic energy gets conserved okay so we are saying that the kinetic energy is getting conserved 
because uh, we are talking about elastic collision and at this point of time I am saying that let's say that the velocity is v1 is equal to u1 into m1 minus m2 by m1 plus m2 but as I said in definition by definition the velocity gets interchange that means u1 is 0 and uh, u2 is 0 and u1 is u1 right it should get interchange that means after collision uh, this u1 should become this and v1 should be more or less zero okay then only we can say it's an elastic collision okay so what happens is that if we take this uh, scenario into con uh, you know, consideration and we say that if m1 is equal to m2 you can check here if m1 is equal to m2 this will actually imply that v1 is equal to u1 okay into 0 so then v1 will become 0 meter per second so the velocity will actually get interchange right so if you say here as i said the velocity should get interchange v1 should become 0 the second velocity should become the first velocity the first velocity should become the second velocity okay v2 will be equal to u1 okay v2 will become u1 because you can see here v1 is 0 so that means from 4 we can check 4 also uh, this is there and 4 implies v2 is equal to u1 plus 0 because v1 is 0 i'm saying so this is u1 thermally the velocity is getting interchanged after collision only if the masses are equal and actually that's a very important conclusion Ki i will have two bodies having elastic collision it's actually quite obvious because if the bodies are colliding and uh, you know it's basically a elastic collision the masses must be equal so that means if m1 is equal to m2 implies elastic collision Okay, so if we want to have an elastic collision, a uh, main requirement is that the masses should be more or less equal. Okay, masses equal only obviously the velocities will get interchanged because if the mass is more, the momentum is more. So the change in momentum will also be different. So as a result, you know the conservation won't be happening. So that is an important conclusion. Now, this is what is there when we are actually talking about uh, you know collision in one dimension. Now, when we are talking about collision in two dimension, we have to, you know, think about uh, resolving the vectors. Okay, so if we talk about collision in two dimension, obviously you, you know, have to look into the problems and see what kind of uh, problems are there and how you are going to solve it. But we have to know this also: collision in two dimension. By collision in two dimension, it simply means that uh, the body is going to fly away after collision. And it will basically have a component as in the x-axis as well as along the y-axis. So that is very important to understand in a uh, two-dimensional collision. So what happens is maybe this is the body before colliding, and after it collides, the body or mass m1 will move in one direction, m2 will move in another direction. So it is not only along x-axis; there is a motion along y-axis also, x-axis also. So that means for such problems you have to think about it and try to solve it using the vector analysis okay using the vector analysis so you can think about it something like this so let's say we have a body of mass uh, m1 let me just write it down here and it is moving with a velocity v1 in this particular direction okay and then at some point we have got the mass m2 maybe it's at rest let's say let's say it is at rest zero meter per second but after it collides both m1 and m2 are going to move in different directions so that means we are talking about inelastic collision because the velocities are going to be different in this case now in both the cases so we're going to talk about inelastic collision so here we need to analyze the system or the situation in Two dimension okay so let's say this was the initial velocity let me write it down as u1 okay let me write it down as u1 it will be more easy or 
इसको हम लोग लिख लेते हैं लेट्स से दिस इज मास एम वन आफ्टर कलिजन एंड इट स्टार्ट मूविंग विद वेलोसिटी वी वन एंड दिस इज मास एम टू आफ्टर कलिजन एंड इट इज स्टार्टिंग टू मूव विद वेलोसिटी वी टू एंड ऑफकोर्स द एंगल ऑल्सो वी के नॉट डिफाइन जस्ट राइट डाउन एनी जनरल एंगल मे बी लेट्स टेक इट एज थीता वन एंड थीता टू so these are the two angles that are possible now if you look into this particular problem you can actually think about resolving it in terms of vector so in terms of vector we know that if you are basically having a vector along a direction which is making some angle with the x axis you can actually resolve it into x and y component right so that is important so in this particular case we can see that we have got the velocity and the mass both and out of them v velocity is the vector mass is a scalar so no issues velocity is a vector so that means the velocity will be resolved so if we have the velocity like this right and if it is making an angle theta along this x axis it is the cos component and along y axis it is the sin component so here what happens is there are two components you can see theta 1 and this is my m1 v1 that means along this direction i am going to get the uh, cos component for velocity v1 that is v1 cos theta 1 and if you want to find out what is the sin component you have to you know take along this direction and this is one so it would be v1 sin theta 1 right sin theta 1 has to be in this direction so that it encloses this velocity so this is the velocity component if you look for v2 uh, again the same thing in this direction again and we are going to get it to be v2 cos of theta 2 and if you look uh, for the sin component it will be downwards and it will be v2 sin theta 2 okay now a uh, normal notion is if we try to do electricity and magnetism and so on everywhere we will see that we will prefer you know cancelling out these two terms v1 sin theta 1 and v2 sin theta 2 now this can only happen if the angle theta 1 and theta 2 are equal and the velocity by which they are getting scattered are equal if they are not equal we can obviously cannot cancel it this okay we cannot cancel this out so obviously our approach has to be different so yahan pe bhi wahi condition hai we can you know think about it in terms of the initial condition this has to be there whenever we are doing a numerical also we have to think about it okay initial condition and then this is my final status so initially it was mass was m1 and velocity was u1 uh, it was m2 and this velocity was zero final it was m1 and v1 and let's say this is m2 and v2 now in this case we are not saying that it's an elast in elastic uh, elastic collision so there is no question of kinetic energy conservation so in this particular case if we actually want to analyze such a situation we are going to only talk about momentum conservation momentum conservation theek okay. hai so we are having this so this is in elastic collision not completely in elastic completely in elastic was the first case that we have discussed so momentum conservation and momentum conservation is we can see that it is actually having two factors uh, along x and along y both are there so we have to write it down along x and along y that is very important so yahan pe analysis very very important hai samajhne ke liye along x axis abhi along x axis before collision we know it is moving along x axis ye bhi x axis pe tha m2 bhi x axis pe hi tha so here what we can say is along x axis we can write it down as mass of the first particle and velocity of the first particle u1 plus it will be zero because second one i am saying it is at zero so let me say it is zero is equal to after collision after collision along x axis x axis is this y axis is this so along x axis we can see that the component of velocities are different so mass is m1 no problem but the velocity component along x axis for the first mass m1 is v1 cos theta 1 plus along x axis the mass 2 and the velocity component is v2 cos theta 2 so that's my uh, momentum along x axis and then i have to also check for y axis so y axis there will be a minus sign because they are in opposite direction now along y axis this is interesting 
before collision there was nothing along y it was only moving along x axis so nothing along y so we don't have any y component so this is zero no y component before collision because y ki taraf to move kari nahi raha x axis mein movement hai iska is taraf hai nahi so that's it but after collision we can see that y axis will have the component because they are uh, deflected at different angles so i can simply write it down as uh, sorry we'll just write down the momentum so momentum mane mass into velocity so mass is m1 but velocity along the y axis is v1 sin theta and we can see that this other velocity component is in the opposite direction so I'll just write it down as minus of m2 v2 sin of theta 2 so if you get any sum in two dimensional uh, motion we can actually talk about it and try to solve it like this okay uh, we can also check it if it's an elastic collision or in elastic collision for elastic collision the kinetic energy must be conserved so we can try to you know equate the uh, relation for kinetic energy okay and check Uh, the relation as well. that is also possible, but it all depends on you know problem to problem. Okay, what exactly? How can the questions are given? So, so based on this, uh, we can do uh, sums as well. Okay, sum is also uh, possible. We can do one sum now. Do the problems. So a number of times we will have numericals where the values will be given before and after conditions will be given. You just have to check with. conservation of momentum and then based on that you can actually find out what will be the answer okay so the question is something like this uh, we basically have a car and it's moving okay and we doing problem on uh, collision okay so a car is moving over a horizontal surface so whenever we say horizontal surface when we are only talking about the x component okay no y component is uh, needed horizontal surface at a velocity 50 cm per second so if you look into the units as well cm the h we try to convert it into meter per second and we are talking about collision so let's write it down it is hit by another car okay another car I'm taking it as car, not car. Okay, so another car, which is many a times you will see that the question is longer, but the answer is shorter, which is moving in the same direction, in the same direction. so these kind of problems whenever it's given you know every question more or less you have to study and look into the question very hard and see ki jigash ka check ki na there a velocity 150 cm per second so the other car was actually moving at a faster speed and hit it okay now let's look into the after condition after collision after collision the cars continue to move in the same direction in the same direction at the same velocity at the same velocity that means after collision both of them will actually join together at the same velocity mane two to the velocity same ho jayega after collision दोनों की वेलोसिटी सेम हो जाएगी एंड वी कैन से वे आर हैविंग टू हैव इट एट लेट्स से 100 सेंटीमीटर पर सेकंड ओके यू हैव टू फाइंड आउट द रेशियो ऑफ द मासेस ऑफ द कार्स फाइंड द रेशियो ऑफ देयर मासेस इट्स अ क्वेश्चन ऑन रेशियो ऑफ मासेस सो मेनी अ टाइम्स इफ इट्स अ क्वेश्चन ऑफ रेशियो इवन इफ द यूनिट्स यू डोंट चेंज फ्रॉम एसआई टू सीजीएस टू और सीजीएस टू एसआई You may still get the answer. Okay, so here also we are going to do the same thing. We are going to just look into the conditions before and after. So it's a quite straightforward problem. Before we can see what the masses of the cart. Okay, let's say we have to find out the ratio of the masses. So let's say mass is m1, 
and the velocity is v1 and v1 for the first cart is given to be 50 centimeter per second let's keep it as 50 centimeter per second and for the second one mass is m2 and the velocity is 150 so you can see here it's 150 it's 50 this is 150 so this is 150 centimeter per second okay that's the first thing and then we can actually check what happens after so after collision both the bodies or masses will actually join together so the masses will be nothing but m1 plus m2 and the velocity that we actually have now is let's say v is equal to 100 centimeter per second so we can see obviously it's a case of inelastic collision in fact completely inelastic collision because both of them join together join together completely inelastic doesn't join together but moves with different velocity elastic uh, inelastic and if it has kinetic energy conserved as well that means it is elastic or we can say the velocity transfer happens then also we can say it's a elastic collision so we actually can see only about momentum conservation we cannot use kinetic energy conservation here so let's find about momentum conservation so if we check for momentum conservation here in this case before and after we can easily do it before mass m1 v1 plus m2 v2 is equal to after collision money masses are same so we can write it down as m1 v plus m2 v both the velocities are same in the second case okay uh, let's just separate them out mathematically we can obviously do it uh, my aim is to find out what is m1 by m2 okay so we have to remember that so what we can do is uh, uh, we can uh, you know find out m1 by m2 for that we can divide throughout by m1 or we can divide throughout by m2 okay so let's divide throughout by m1 so if i divide this by m1 this by m1 this by m1 and this by m1 so if we do that we can write it down here m1 Theta m1, we can divide this also m1, this is m1, divide through by m1. So this will become just v1 plus we have got m2 by m1, or you wish to find out what is m2 by m1. So we are writing it down in that form v2 is equal to this is just v plus this would be m2 by m1 into v. So uh, what we can do now is we can take uh, m2 by m1 on one side we can see both the sides we are getting m2 by m1 term so let's take it m2 divided by m1 here we can see this is v2 so i'll take it to be v2 and this i'll take it on the other side so this would be minus of it and on this side we have got v and uh, then this is minus of v so we want this so we see all the values are already given m1 m2 by m1 is equal to v2 minus v so v2 is 150 minus v is 100 please take care units are same so i just subtracting the value so it's fine i don't need to worry about converting it v minus v1 capital v is 100 and v1 is nothing but 50. so this is plus 50 and uh, this one would be nothing but m2 by m1 into 50 so this is also 50 this is equal to 50 so if i do that now i can simply write it down as m2 divided by m1 is equal to 50 by 50 which is equal to so they told me to find out what's the ratio between m1 and m2 and i've used the law of conservation of momentum and i found out what is m1 by m2 so uh, these kind of problems are also quite common. Uh, these kind of numericals might be there. You have to just write down what is the condition before and what is the condition after. And based on that, we can uh, you know talk about the conservation of momentum. So these kind of questions uh, will definitely be there. Before or after condition that curve, and 